Hello, my friends. It's wonderful to be here with you today. My name is Steve D'Angelo, and I'm here to talk to you about hemp and the hemp revolution that's sweeping the globe. It's a subject I've devoted my life to because I believe the hemp plant may hold the key to the survival of an inhabitable planet. There are two critical facts to understand about hemp. The first is that simply by planting and harvesting it, we reap remarkable environmental benefits. Hemp crops remove 20 tons of carbon from the atmosphere for every hectare harvested, far more than trees or any other viable crop. That hemp can be planted on land contaminated with industrial pollutants and will clean it with a natural process of phytoremediation. It was first used for this purpose in the Chernobyl nuclear disaster zone and has been used successfully in many places around the world since then. Hemp can be grown without the need for chemical fertilizers and pesticides. It has the longest taproot of any plant and fixes nitrogen in the soil in which it's grown. So hemp can also be planted on eroded and currently unproductive land. Just by planting and harvesting hemp, we bring down global warming and clean pollution while increasing the amount of productive agricultural lands. The second critical fact to understand about hemp is that it is a remarkable raw material. Just about anything currently made from trees, petroleum, or cotton can instead be made from hemp. The possibilities are almost endless. Imagine a truck. It's full of packages. Its body is made of biodegradable hemp plastic that is 10 times stronger than steel. Its engine runs on hemp biodiesel or electricity from a hemp-powered electrical plant. All of the boxes in the truck and all of the plastic wrapping those boxes and half of the products inside those boxes are made of hemp. So is the driver's uniform and her shoes and socks. And when our driver stops for lunch, she eats at a table covered with a hemp tablecloth and set with hemp napkins. She orders a pizza or pasta made from hemp flour, along with a salad dressed with hemp seed oil. Or perhaps she prefers a hemp tofu stir fry. There's no need for her to order meat because hemp seed contains more protein than any meat does. After her workday is finished, our driver comes home to a house made of hempcrete, which can be just as strong as regular concrete, but is much lighter, more flame resistant, more mold resistant, has better insulation properties, and continues to absorb carbon for its entire lifetime. The house is furnished with furniture made of hemp fiberboard and hemp upholstery. And it's carpeted with natural hemp fibers instead of toxic extruded petroleum. All of these things are possible with technology that is available today, technology that you'll learn more about at this conference. And more becomes possible with each passing day as we learn more about how to work with this remarkable plant. A few years ago, it was estimated that 25,000 different products could be made from hemp. Today, that estimate has jumped to 50,000 different products. One of the new products is graphene, a semiconductor material that is essential for solar energy. It's currently mined in places like Africa at great economic and social cost. But a North American hemp research company has now developed hemp graphene. It can be inexpensively made into sheets, which the company believes can then be used to cover homes and vehicles, turning their entire surface areas into giant solar collectors. This is the great promise of hemp. It is now possible for us to provide for our daily needs, to construct our homes and our businesses, to clothe and feed ourselves, 
to move ourselves from place to place, to protect ourselves from the elements while simultaneously cleaning up the planet. Hemp can replace the toxic raw materials that are poisoning our planet and provide the basis for a new life-affirming economy. The whole world understands this basic dynamic. Time is short. We have to learn how to sustain ourselves without destroying the planet we all depend on for life. That's why the United Nations has released their list of sustainable development goals that need to be achieved by 2030. It is the reason so many people around the world are taking those goals very seriously and finding that hemp may be one of the best tools we have to achieve them. A quick read through the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals shows that hemp applies to most of them. A world that fully embraces the hemp economy is a world where food security and nutrition will be improved, where agriculture and cities and industry will all become more sustainable, where both the production and the consumption of goods will become more conscious and more responsible, where affordable and reliable energy will be grown cleanly and abundantly in fields, where ecosystems are protected and our planet is returned to a condition capable of supporting healthy life for all who inhabit it. This is the future that awaits us, should we choose to pursue it. There are two main challenges that stand in our way. The first is the misunderstanding and stigma that still cling to the hemp plant. This is a tricky challenge. Overcoming it will require citizens and government alike to rethink many deeply entrenched attitudes. My hope is that with more conferences like this one, with more courageous activists and business people like Clara Norell, with more dispassionate sharing of the actual science and facts, with more respectful dialogue, that Sweden and every other country will come to understand hemp is a resource that is too precious to ignore any longer. The other challenge is one of size, scale, infrastructure, and commitment. Hemp produces huge volumes of biomass. The upside is that biomass can be converted into a wide array of products, but there is a downside to all that biomass. Its bulkiness makes it expensive to transport. It's therefore important that hemp processing and manufacturing facilities be located close to the site of cultivation. Those facilities will cost millions of dollars to construct and their economic viability will depend on a consistent reliable and sufficient supply of hemp. So we must raise sufficient funds to both construct multi-million dollar industrial facilities and to finance the cultivation of sufficient feedstock to keep them in operation. And we must do this everywhere on the planet and we must do it before time runs out. Hemp offers valuable solutions to the problems that every human society on the planet is facing today. But we will all have to work together to reap that harvest of benefits. All of us together will need to confront and overcome outdated thinking and embrace the most modern science. We can't do this halfway. We can't do it divided. We can't undertake such huge projects without some degree of social consensus. It'll take all of us coming to agreement to find and dedicate the resources and the resolve that are going to be required to build a new life-affirming economy. The task will not be easy, but I believe it's possible. And I dread to consider the alternative, to consider where we and our children will be should we fail. That's why I'm here speaking to you today. That's why my friend Clara Norell has organized this conference. It is the reason that thousands of other hemp activists and business people around the world 
have dedicated their lives to spreading this good news. We all believe that if you learn what we have learned, and like us, then dedicate yourselves to teaching others this same truth, then together we can and we will undertake this most critical of missions. We all wish you the very best as you begin your journey with him and hope you join us soon.